This LOS is distinguished between the value and price of swaps. Pricing and valuation of swap contracts. Valuation of the swap during its life again appeals to replication and the principle of no arbitrage. We'll find a way to re reproduce the remaining payments on the swap with other transactions. The value of that strategy is the value of the swap. To replicate a swap with zero value at initiation, present values of off-market FRAs must sum to zero. Recall we said they're off-market FRAs because we're using one swap uh, price uh, for the series of FRAs, okay? The swap price is the fixed rate. Swap value is positive if expected short-term rates increase and negative if expected short-term rates decrease. So I put here in bold, in green, and in red, this is very important, to obtain the fixed rate on the swap or to value it later during its life, we will need information from the market for the underlying. As we previously noted, there are derivatives on bonds and interest rates, equities, currencies, and commodities. It is not possible to provide a general and simple statement of how to price swaps that covers all of these cases, but that topic is covered in advanced material. So get ready, I put that in bold and red. That topic is covered in CFA level two. Now we're not gonna work through this example. This is from CFA level two, a practice question on interest rate swap contracts. I just wanna show you this as an FYI. So consider a two year interest rate swap with semi-annual payments. Assume a notional principal of 25 million. Calculate the annualized fixed rate on the swap and the current structure, term structure of LIBOR interest rates is as follows. So you've got LIBOR at time zero, 180 days, 5.85%, 360 days, 6.05%, 540 days, 6.24%, and 720 days, 6.65%. Okay, enjoy. This is CFA level two. We're really not going to go through the math, but I just wanted to show you where this is headed. In CFA level two, you do have to calculate the annualized fixed rate on the swap. Okay, so you're given a term structure of LIBOR interest rates, you calculate the present value factors, and then you use a formula to calculate the rate. And in this case, we've got 3.16%. Okay. Again, this is uh, CFA level two, to be absolutely clear. You don't need it for CFA level one. Uh, as the book said, it's uh, covered in the advanced material, how we calculate the annualized fixed rate on the swap. Okay, so you know the, the value of a swap at initiation is zero, but then as time goes on, you need to calculate the market value of the swap, okay? And again, this is a CFA level two practice question where you calculate the market value of the swap 120 days later from the point of view of the party paying the floating rate and receiving the fixed rate and from the point of view of the party paying the fixed rate and receiving the floating rate. So in this case, the term structure 120 days later has changed, okay? So they're giving you the rates. And this slide is working through the math that we cover in CFA level two. These are my slides for CFA level two, by the way. And I just wanted to show you that in the advanced material, we do cover how we calculate the fixed rate on a swap. And uh, some time later, with, when, the, when we get into the swap, in this case, 120 days later, how we calculate the value based on the term structure that exists at that later date. But again, this is not needed for CFA level one. To be clear, this is CFA level two, but this is where it's headed. Just as an FYI, nice to know, not need to know. Okay, what you need to know for CFA level one is really that a swap involves a fixed payment exchange for a floating payment. So the contract here uh, specifies that the two parties will make a series of uh, payments at times that we will designate as one, two, and three here, okay? And uh, the one party is making the fixed payment and receiving the um, uh, floating payment, okay? And so for a swap, all the fixed payments are equal, they are known. So what the text is saying is, is that is similar in a way to a series of three forward agreements. Now remember that forward agreements only involve the uh, one payment. So we could see here the first forward, you agree to uh, pay fixed at time T and receive spot one. The second, you would agree to pay uh, the forward rate two at time two and receive S2. 
and the third you would agree to pay the forward rate 3 at time 3 and receive S3. But in the forward market, those would all have different, um, different rates. But with the swap rate, we need one rate, one swap price. And that's why we say that the swap is based on uh, FRAs that are off market. Okay, so again, we've seen this slide before, and that's the basic concept that you only need for CFA level one, the foundation. So we're just gonna finish this LOS with three quick practice questions. The first one, which of these is best classified as a forward commitment? A, a swap agreement, B, a convertible bond, or C, an asset-backed security? So because we've been talking about swap agreements, I wanted to put this question in here because I just want you to remember that a swap agreement is a forward commitment, okay? A swap agreement is equivalent to a series of forward agreements, which are described as forward uh, commitments. So a convertible bond is not a forward uh, commitment, nor is an asset-backed security. This is a nice question. A corporation issues five-year fixed rate bonds. Its treasurer expects interest rates to decline for all maturities for at least the next year. She enters into a one-year agreement with a bank to receive quarterly fixed rate payments and to make payments based on floating rates benchmarked on three-month LIBOR. This agreement is best described as A, a swap, B, a futures contract, or C, a forward contract. In my opinion, this question is pretty easy. A is correct because a swap is a series of forward payments. It says here, one year agreement to receive quarterly fixed rate payments, payments. So C has to be wrong. It can't be a forward contract because there's more than one payment, okay? And she's entering an agreement with a bank. Futures contracts are traded on an exchange and they're standardized, okay? So we know B is wrong. B is wrong, C is wrong, so A must be right. Sometimes that's the way you answer these multiple choice questions. Nevertheless, A is correct because a swap is a series of forward payments. Specifically, a swap is an agreement between two parties to exchange a series of future cash flows. The corporation receives fixed interest payments and makes variable interest rate payments. Given that the contract is for one year and the floating rate is based on three month LIBOR, at least four payments will be made during the year. And one last question that's based on the definition. Always important to, to uh, remember the definitions, and a lot of these are on the glossary. I've said it many times. The tenor of a swap is best described as A, the size of the contract, B, original time to maturity, or C, net amount owed by one party to the other. Now, we should know that. That's just based on a definition, which should be easy, low-hanging fruit. B is correct. The original time to maturity is referred to as the tenor of the swap. Again, we're looking at the glossary, and I've said you can copy and print it out if you're using the ebook. If not, uh, you've got the hard copy. Flip through it, make sure you're up to speed. A lot of the questions on the CFA exam are based on definitions. And that last practice question was a good example of that. Uh, it was asking the definition of tenor, and tenor is the time to maturity for a bond or derivative contract, also called term to maturity. And that's the last for this LOS. Thank you.